Welcome to Cinematech. I'm. I'm. You say I'm, and then I say Brandon yeah. Grant. <laughs> no, and Chris Murray. No, I'm, and then you Chris say Murray. Brandon Grant, and then I say. And then, and then I say, and I'm. Chris Murray. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. I just gotta feel that moment where we dive right in. I feel it, dude. Are you feeling it, Mr. Krabs? Welcome to Cinematech. Cinema Talk. F <laughs> And you have to say, I'm. Four, three, two, one, go. Three. And we're live. We're not live. <laughs> Come on. Are we doing it? Are we doing it? Welcome to Cinema Talk. I'm Brendan Grant. And I'm Chris Murray. And this is a comprehensive guide to indie filmmaking. In our first episode, we're going to be talking about all the basic necessities you need to achieve that cinematic look in your video. Things we'll be covering in this first episode are audio, shallow depth of field, lighting, camera movement, Oh, safari. I have a Kit Kat bar I haven't eaten. <laughs> Never mind, I ate it. Audio, the thing, sound. Sound. A lot of people take audio for granted. They try to get a really, really expensive camera, they try to get their image to look really, really awesome, and then they have just awful, awful audio. Audio is an essential piece of filmmaking. You can always have an image. I mean, we all own cell phones, so we can produce an image at any time. But if you notice when you listen to the videos, well, watch the videos and hear them, it's not very good sounding and you just can't really produce a good film with that audio. That's where good professional audio comes in. So you could pair up like an iPhone video with a really, really high-end high -end microphone and people will forgive the bad quality of the video if the audio sounds impeccable. So we're going to talk with the mic we're using right now and then we're gonna unplug the mic. I'll go do that, I'll plug the mic live and we'll keep talking. That will work, right? Yeah, it'll keep recording. All right, so I'm yeah, about to yeah. unplug the mic. I was out of focus. And now here's the audio. Now if this worked, and I hope it did, we can't really tell because we have no way of monitoring it, but we just unplugged the Rode video mic we have attached to the 5D, and now this is just in-camera audio, which I am assuming, and I can almost guarantee, is not good audio. Um, we'll plug it back in and show you again the difference. And this is with the Rode video mic plugged in. And there is a distance separating. This is a camera mounted mic. We still recommend using second hand, oh, second sound or um, separate recorded audio to achieve your audio. But so here's an example of an external uh, shotgun mic we use. This is an Asden, um, I wanna, it was the S SGM1X for those of you that are wondering. Uh, this is what we use for a lot of our productions, just because we have it in-house, we don't have to rent it uh, from anywhere, so we own it. And then we also use, um, well, a variety of different external recorders. This is the one, again, that we own in-house, uh, the Tascam. Which model is it? The DR60D. 60D. The DR60D. And this is actually a cool little nifty recorder. It acts as a field recorder. It'll screw in. If you look here, it'll screw in right to the bottom of your DSLR or any camera. And then there's also, of course, the famous H4N and other more affordable sources. Highly and recommend the Zoom H4N or H5. And now with the H5 or the H6 out, the H4N can be obtained rather cheaply and still produce decently good audio for indie filmmaking. Just as long as you're thinking about sound and not relying on your camera's internal source of audio and you're recording it in the second system. I will not be of much help from this point on. But perhaps the great Darius Dragonsvein can shed some light on the princess's location. I really know, guys. Now that you learned the basics of the importance of audio, we're gonna move on to how to control the look of your image and add that thing called shallow depth of field, which you see in more cinematic flicks where the background is out of focus or fuzzy and the foreground or subject is in focus. This is called uh, depth of field or shallow depth of field. And we're gonna touch on how you can control this with the camera. There are three things you can do with your camera. If you have a DSLR, it's much, much easier to control these three things. That's why uh, indie filmmakers love DSLRs so much. Um, so there are three things. 
One, your distance from your your camera to your subject. The closer you are and your, that, your, that your focus is, the shallower your depth of field will be. Uh, the next thing is the focal length of your lens, or whether your lens is wide or telephoto, or like zoomed in. If you're, it's the same thing as distance. If you're, if you have a telephoto lens, which is very, very zoomed in, then you're technically uh, or theoretically bringing that subject closer to the camera because you're, you, it's like zoomed in close to it. So you'll get shallow depth of field. So if you're using a wide-angle lens, it's much, much more difficult to get a shallow depth of field. Although movies still use wide-angle lenses, it's just shallow depth of field is a a classic staple of like of like cinema. Uh, and then the last thing is your aperture. Um, if you have a open aperture, which is a small number, so say like 2.0 or 1.0 or even, which is pretty pretty open, um, then you'll have really, really, really shallow depth of field. And then if you're all the way uh, closed down in your aperture, really, really small aperture, which is a higher number, say like f22, then you'll have a really, really deep depth of field. Have I benefited from exceptional lighting? You tell me. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is lighting. Lighting is really, really important. Another thing that a lot of people don't consider and a good lighting scenario can really, really help um, make your movie a lot more cinematic. So lighting, what lighting does, why it's so important is it's not just putting a light in front of your scene and just trying to make it bright enough so your, cap your, your camera will capture it. Lighting can do a lot more than that. It can tell your viewer what to look at, what to focus on, depending on what parts of the image are brightest. It can give clarity to specific parts and make other parts um, you know, not visible. And then the other thing is it can really, really affect the emotion of what you're seeing. Whether the light is dark, whether it's high contrast, whether your light is soft or hard, whether you have really, really hard shadows or it's really, really soft and diffused, it's gonna give a totally different look and create different emotion. Now, this is all, you know, film theory type stuff that takes many, many years of studying and, what is Chris doing? Um, and many years of just using lights um, to figure out how to create different emotions and how to suggest uh, where your viewer should be looking. But anyways, I guess Chris has given you an example of the way you could just use like a handheld LED light and create different looks. So right now he's using the light as a kicker on me, which means he's kicking me away from the background by lighting uh, the edge of my body or something to make that edge brighter than the background to separate. Um, so that's just something that a light can do. Lights can um, be used, let me take this real quick. Let me turn it on. Lights can be used to make things look creepy, right? classic campfire or like putting a flashlight under your face to make things look really, really creepy when you're telling a scary story. That's what light can do. It can add emotion to your piece and it can also tell your viewer where to look and what to look at and when to look at it and how to feel about what they're looking at. Just stroke that while I talk about movement. There's multiple ways you can add movement. You can do it on a tripod. Um, panning left to right, tilting up and down. You can boom, which the actual camera itself moves up and down, keeping the level of the frame Even level. together, <laughs> yeah. supposed to be. And those are very basic and effective uses of moving the camera, but to be really cinematic, you want to go above and beyond that and actually leave the camera in a position and move the entire camera body itself and by doing this you can accomplish it or you can accomplish this by doing dollies things like sliders and then of course you if you have the budget you can invest in an actual slider and there's cheap sliders that might not be as smooth and there's high-end ones such as Kessler sliders or Rhino sliders just which super are nice and super smooth and then they can even be motorized ones or crank ones and the list goes on and it becomes more and more ideal and effective for you as it goes on but sometimes you don't need that and you can achieve it uh, for a lot cheaper and there's also this thing called a steady cam. They can either come as just the sled itself, which is what the camera sits on. Right here we uh, have a glide cam. Um, this is a very smaller Right now it has an iPhone mount on it, but... Which is great for small cameras. I'm pretty sure the Black Magic could fly on that, but this 5D is too heavy for... If, you're, if you have any type of budget whatsoever, then you could do things like go to a rental, a rental office and actually rent out these devices for you. Here's for another cheap. super cheap uh, option. It's called uh, X-Grip by I, I 
think Optica, but it's just another option out there. And then there's also this. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it's called. I remember buying it on Amazon for like 40 or 50 bucks. And it folds out. Um, we'll find we'll links. links. We'll have a link. But it folds out and it can work super easy and effective. And maybe we'll even show footage. We actually did a short hunt it where we use this. We'll show a few clips of the quality of using this stabilizer or a handheld rig. And pretty much you just throw this on your shoulder and it's fully adjustable. Pop the camera. So as you can see, everything adjusts. You just quick tighten it down, pop the camera on if it's let's say too close to your face. This extends outwards. Dozens of different shoulder rigs like this exist on Amazon or eBay. You can get them for actually relatively cheap. I mean, if you want to get like a super high-end one, they run thousands of dollars or at least hundreds. But you can get one for 100, 150 bucks for really, really nice. This one was about 50 bucks. So there's definitely a lot of options out there if you're a serious indie filmmaker and you want to get handheld shots, but you don't want them to be like Jello cam. You can do things like this. You can get uh, a small rig like that or a shoulder rig like this or you can get into buying a relatively cheap glide cam or relatively cheap slider or using a skateboard, um, being resourceful. And again, like the thing I've been mentioning this, throughout this entire video is you just wanna be aware that these things exist. What I would recommend is if you're starting off, just get used to shooting a film totally, totally stable before you get used to shooting a film with movement. So that way when you have the flexibility of adding movement, it becomes a tool rather than using it to just be lazy. All right, well that's our first episode of Cinema Talk. We know we kind of maybe ran on a little bit too long, but I guess that's where the talk comes into play in the title. We tend to ramble because we can go on for days and days and months Weeks, talking about year, this. I could talk for a year. And Straight. actually we will be with several more episodes, so be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can keep up with that and make sure you put the playlist in your favorites if that's a thing and check out all the links we provide for you so and if you have any questions or anything you'd like to know feel the free to talk will continue in the or in the comments yeah can, there we feel go. free to comment <laughs> and we'll hopefully answer your questions on the next episode so once again i'm brendan grant and i'm chris murray and this has been cinema talk peace Relax and enjoy the show. Roll credits. Enjoy your burrito. No, that's the Nerdist. We gotta have an outro.